Okay, in the last lecture we taught <coughs> electrostatics and now we will cover magnetostatics. We derived two equations and those two equations were the curve, the divergence in curve of electric field. Now we will start with the magnetostatics. So again this is Maxwell equations and we will start today with magnetostatics. Now they force electrostatic charge at rest. This is magnetostatics. Magnetostatics means current which is constant, which is steady. We will define this thing further, that what this steady means. But for the moment, we will not go into the discussion that whether there is, electric, there is magnetic field or there is no magnetic field. It is all, you can say, the electric field or the radiation of it. That discussion we will move, uh, we can say, to another section in which we will discuss electrodynamics. At the moment, we are in electricity and magnetism. So these are completely, you can say, different from each other. In magnetostatics, is the fundamental thing of electric field was charge. And we said some properties of that charge. Now we will say that the fundamental thing of magnetic field are which give rise to the magnetic field. Magnetic field B. And this is actually we define is current and current is we denote by R. Now this is the fundamental entity for magnetic field. So what current is equal to, current is actually the charge traveling in a unit time. Charge per unit time is called current. If I define the terminology, you remember, we were defining lambda for the light charge, we were defining sigma for surface charge, and rho for volume charge. So if I write this Q in terms of line charges, because it is current, it is going in a line. So I will define this in terms of the line charge and I can write that this is equal to lambda dl if I define this as dq right then this will be dl if I define q then this will be l and divide by t so dimensionally you can look at this one that this is actually lambda l by and this L over T, I can write is current can be written as lambda times V, the speed or velocity. So we have this another relation for current. And you know the unit of current is in there. It's a very big unit. It is one coulomb per one second. Coulomb is a very big unit. Due to that reason, one ampere is a very big unit of current. So we will move on with this. Current is a scalar or vector quantity. We will see this thing in a while. That in which class we should place current. Now, one thing that we should also study is the Lorentz force. You know, the Lorentz force is the sum of the electric as well as magnetic force. So, this Lorentz force is equal to Q times E plus Q V cross V. Now you know 
that this is the electric component, this is the magnetic component. Electric component will always be present whenever there will be charge. But it is not the same for magnetic component as well. Even if magnetic field is there, <coughs> magnetic force may not be there. And the reason for it is this V. If V is equal to zero, charge is stationary in a magnetic field and it will experience no force. So it is unlike the electric component. Magnetic field V is non-zero, yet the force can be zero. So we say that the magnetic component Fm is actually equal to Q V cross D. Now, if we want to check whether the magnetic force works, we will have to check this thing. So, you know what's the definition of work? DW you can write is force <coughs> distance. This force here, the magnetic force is Fm and this is Df. And now this force is equal to Q V cross D and dot. Now DL, DL is the length element, S equal Vt. It will be distance time, means S will be equal to velocity times the time. So it is, I can write that this can be written as Vdt. So if I write this Vdt, dt is a scalar, but V is a vector. Now look here. V cross B, the cross product definition, the output of this or the product of this will be perpendicular to V, will be perpendicular to C and will be perpendicular to the plane of them. They are containing it. So, this is perpendicular, this thing is perpendicular to this thing. And you know the dot product of perpendicular thing is zero. So, the work done by the magnetic force comes out to be zero. It means magnetic force is not working. Okay, but it is just for a while, I think. Yes, sir. Okay, it's for fraction of a second. So, here we are having this force equal to the work done equal to zero. So magnetic force does not work. Our magnetic forces do not work. It's quite strange. So the work is the responsibility of electric component. Magnetic force can change the direction. Magnetic forces can maintain your work. The work which is done by the capacitor there in a fan is actually maintained by the magnetic field. Magnetic field, if I am a charged particle and I am inside a magnetic field, I will experience no force at all, unless and until I move. As I move, I will experience a force and that force will be magnetic force. But the movement direction is also important. If the angle between the V and D is zero, no then there will be again no magnetic field. Now, if even I am moving, but I am moving in the direction of the magnetic field, I will experience no force. The maximum force I will experience if I will move perpendicular to the direction of a magnetic field. That will be the maximum. If any angle to the magnetic field I go, the force will become smaller, smaller and so on. So magnetic force does no work. This was just to establish this fact. And now we will go to the magnetic force again. And you know that F magnetic is equal to, can I write this thing, if I want to write this component in integral form, then this will be V cross D and DQ. 
the q I will do integrate on q. So then I can write this thing is this is equal to for dq I will now write lambda dl. So we cross d and then lambda dl. And I can then change this one into another representation and it is if I write now what is actually lambda times v from here lambda times v I have written as here lambda times v is current so I can write that this is current into magnetic field and dl so this one I cross d here I am taking I as a vector quantity. Now you will have to think of this thing. If a wire is exactly going straight, not twisting, then current will be a vector quantity. But if you move the wire, twist it, current will change the direction. So it means current itself is having no direction. It's a scalar. It is the length element which is deciding its direction. So here, the vector thing is this one, not this one. So I will have to write this thing is I is a constant and it's a scalar and this is dl cross d. And this will be another, we can say, representation of the magnetic force. So the length element is responsible for giving direction to the current. Okay, now as we defined lambda, lambda was the charge per unit length, sigma was the charge per unit area and rho was the charge per unit volume. Now we will have to check this one as well. The current may go in a line or it may go on a surface or it may go in a volume, right? But is this thing is motion, <coughs> okay? So motion is always experienced or checked with the help of a cross-sectional area. Now if a current is going in a wire, the wire is having some diameter, it means wire is having some volume. But the current is only measure how much is passing through the cross-sectional area. So when it is length, length will also be perpendicular to the current. If it is area, area will also be perpendicular to the current. Let's see. I consider this is a surface. You know what's the definition of a surface. Surface is something which is having two dimension while the third dimension which is the thickness is negligible. Right? So this will have some negligible width. And the current is going this way. So the length which you will take perpendicular length to this one will just serve as like sigma. So one dimension is decreased for current because it is always experiencing the cross-sectional length or cross-sectional area. So one dimension of it is decreased by that perpendicularity. So I will say that this one is done. It's completely line. And now if I represent the analogy of K and K is just like sigma. This is surface current because this is surface on this surface current will flow. And if I take a very small, we can say length element such that a length element will be perpendicular to the direction of current. So I will say the K I will define the surface current is current by dl such that this dl is perpendicular 
we were not having such restrictions here because there was no movement involved. It was the static situation. Now here movement is involved. Sub so, gi over dl perpendicular. Perpendicular means cross sectional. And this will give me the current per unit. This one is length, but if we look at this analogy, this is surface current. One dimension of length and one this perpendicularity. So it is behaving like an area. Clear? Similarly, if I define J, the current density, this is called the volume current density. Then this will be di by dA and this area will be perpendicular. There is no current which is written as di over d tau. Right? It has no concept. Because for a fixed volume, current will not be flowing. So that's why we are getting this perpendicularity is an extra dimension. So I can write that for this one, for two dimensional flow, for the surface flow, I will write that K is actually equal. A here was lambda times V. Now here we will have sigma times V. And for J we will have rho times V. The volume charge is flowing. So for this one I can now write from here that the magnetic force if I want to write in terms of K then this will be equal to I can write like uh, over here as I wrote <coughs> lambda V where I wrote lambda V I will okay. here so I wrote lambda V is equal to I. I. Now if I will write for DQ is sigma V. So sigma and V will give you K. Right? Similarly, if for DQ I write rho V, then rho times V will give you J. So I can briefly write this thing is it will be the integral. <coughs> And K cross B and B A. Now here, this will not have a dot product. Here, this area I will consider as a scalar, but it is just an incremental thing. And I can write this thing is G cross B from that analogy. I can write this one beta. Right? So, or you can say I wrote the magnetic force in terms of current here, which is a line current, in terms of surface current, in terms of volume current. But you will have to keep that difference in mind that one dimension is reduced here.